Well, hello everybody, it's Rose. And I'm here today with a very, very, very large unboxing. Um, now this was the gift that I received from Victoria's Moon for having uh, done a review of one of their diamond paintings. Uh, those of you who watch my channel regularly know that I did the uh, Blue Flying Dragon. And uh, so they said I could pick any picture any image I wanted from their catalog, and they would send me the diamond painting. So um, I saw this one, and the first thing I, I realized was it is so incredibly detailed that um, the only way to get the benefit of the whole thing is to get the biggest possible size that they had. And they had it in a 100 by 150. So I... Um, I told Victoria's Moon, Alvina, that uh, I wanted that size, but that I'd be happy to pay the difference between whatever size they were willing to send me and that size, because this would have been like a hundred and, I don't know, I can't remember, 150 bucks or something like that. And, um, or, I'll just check it. This one would have been 99.99 pounds. Uh, so 99.99 pounds. So that would be $129.07 US or $169.68 Canadian. So we're talking, you know, something that would be very expensive. Anyway, Alvina got back to me and said, no, no, that's fine. You can have it. Uh, we won't charge you for it, but you'll have to pay the customs fee if you you know if you want it you have to pay any customs fee that dhl charges because this has to go through dhl because it's more than 55 centimeters um wide so uh they can't just put it in the mail so there's going to be extra charges so they were happy to do that and i was happy to pay the 25 dollars and 26 cents customs fee so i got this monster for 25 dollars and 26 cents Canadian. Um, okay, so uh, what we what I noticed first when it was delivered a few minutes ago is that it says that it was opened and released by customs. I don't know which customs, clearly not Canadian customs, because if it was Canadian customs, it would be in English and French by law. So this had to have been either U.S. customs, well, I assume it was U.S. customs that opened it. Okay, because this did go through customs in the United States. Uh, so, I'm very eager to get into this. Now, there's a bunch of uh, paperwork and stuff on the front, which I will just uh, strip off and set aside. That's just the DHL paperwork. Okay. So, this is not the first thing that I've ever had that was um, opened at customs, but it's been a long time, I think, since I've had something that was opened. All right. Okay, so they actually slit the package open. Um, you can see here where they slid it open. I guess just to ensure that what was inside was what was supposed to be inside. I don't know that they actually did anything else. Now, of course, um, I'm sure all of you know that all of this stuff goes through um, an x-ray machine at Customs, but they must have still had some concerns when they saw the package. So that's, and, and sometimes they just pick stuff for random inspection. I used to work for customs, so um, so I know how Canada customs works. All right, so this is the largest diamond painting packages I've ever seen. It says, best wishes for you. And I'm just thinking, this is the width of my diamond painting. And just for funsies, Let's measure the box. It is 
it's 106 centimeters long, which is what you'd expect for a 100 centimeter wide diamond painting. I'll just get some of the box garbage here off of the uh, off the floor. Okay, so very nice. Oh my goodness, this weighs a ton. Okay. All right, box is otherwise empty. You can see the light through there because of all the cuts. Okay, so we'll just throw that away. All right, I need more space. I'm just gonna move my computer over here. Oh my goodness, I need a lot of space for this. Oh, there's a loose drill. Okay, so that's why I have my little green boat here. All right, I'm going to open it up this way. Oh my goodness. Okay, so far it's looking really good. Looking good. Wow. Holy. This is the inventory sheet I got. It doesn't have a picture, it just has the legend on it. So that's a little different than what I'm used to. But that's okay. I got my inventory sheet. It's all good. And then inside here, ooh, all kinds of stuff. All right. So inside here we have three humongous bags of drills. Oh, you can't see all of that. Oh my goodness. Okay, you can't see all of this. Wow. Um, because it's just too wide. You know what I think I'm going to have to do? I think I'm going to have to, um, I'm gonna have to put you on a chair or something to raise you up some more. Okay. Uh, there's going to be a pause while I uh, put the camera on the chair. Okay, everybody. So uh, I've just um, put you on one of my dining room chairs so that you can see this entire thing. Um, I'm just going to save my knees by sitting down. Okay, so what do we have? I'll show you um, the drill kit first. So the first thing I notice is they sent me one of these pens, which is very nice. I've never figured out how to use them properly. So I've got a bunch of them now and they just sit in my, um, in my pen box. Uh, okay, so then I've got a pair of nice, nice tweezers. A multiplacer, I don't know, it's a big multiplacer. I don't know how many that is. It's a lot. I might actually have to become proficient in multiplacer, but I suspect that this is going to be all confetti. And then I've got the drill pen with a cushy. And I've got a single boat with funnel. A little piece of... Um, uh, sticker and some pink wax okay and then the second kit because I got two identical kits well I think they're identical yes um, yes they're identical this one also has the little sticker in it so two identical kits with the premium tweezers which I appreciate so that's very nice. Okay, um, I'll show you the bags, of, the bags of drills. So, okay, so here we have the smaller bag of drills, the medium sized bag of drills, and 
and another medium size. Well, no, this is a large size bag of drills. These two are actually both large size bags of drills. Okay, so I'll just uh, put those here for now. And we'll take a look at the cans. Oh, wait a minute. You know what? I'm going to use those to weigh down the cans. On All right. This is so big. Oh, my goodness. So I'll tell you a little story in a minute um, about what I did. Um, the first garbage day after election night here in Canada. So it, it got a little bit folded on this end, but that's okay because it's just the um, the edge of the canvas. There's no there's no principle there. All right. Oh my. Hold on. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. So uh, as you see, the canvas is in exceptionally good shape. Uh, there is a small bit of creasing down the middle. I think that no, the paper. There's a break in the paper here, so there's two strips of the paper. I think the box must have gotten a little bit crunched. Yes, I can see where the box got crunched. Uh, and this is where the box got crunched. But I don't... Well, okay, so I see here what could be rivers. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to spend a little bit of time flattening out my canvas as much as I can before, before I start peeling back the paper because I can see where there are little air bubbles and I want to flatten those out as much as possible before I start manipulating the paper. that down there. And there's another one here. And it's coming from uh, where the bend was. So I believe that it was the uh, crunching of the box that led the paper to pull away with the adhesive from the canvas. So this should actually be relatively simple to fix. And I'm sorry I'm yelling because I'm way far away from the camera and I'm talking down to the canvas. So I want to be able to have you hear me as much as possible. watch this just skip ahead for a minute or two minutes So, 
I'm doing the best I can. We'll see. If I have, like, if this doesn't solve the issue, that's okay. We'll fix it when I'm examining the canvas. So I'm pressing really, really hard. It's actually hurting my fingers to press this hard. But what I want to do is help the canvas adhere to the adhesive or have the adhesive adhere to the can canvas before I begin pulling back the paper. the center of my canvas so that I'm actually pushing the air out from between the paper and the adhesive in the hopes that that will um, alleviate the air bubbles that are forming here because they're forming as I'm watching this. This has happened once or twice before with different diamond paintings. So um, I don't think that it's the manufacturing process. I think it's, um, it's more a case of the paintings having suffered insults in shipping. So here's another air bubble that is just formed. It wasn't here a couple of minutes ago. All right, so don't actually know if that's helping a lot. Um, I suppose we could do an experiment with this, and I could open up each side and see, because look, here's, here's another air bubble that's forming. Um, yeah, I think that's what I'll do. I'm going to turn this over. Yeah, see, that there were none of these before. This has just happened since I've unrolled it. Okay. I have to move my computer again. There we go. So I'll tell you something. I, I ordered something this big because I was afraid that the detail wouldn't be here for something smaller. And I'm concerned that the image was not high enough resolution that the really big size um, is going to, to make it uh, all work very well. Okay, so that did help what I was doing. Because I can see here that the bubbles that were here are, uh, at least I think I was working on this side. Okay. Move over here and see what I have on this side. So it looks like there are three strips of 
twisted. of um, the adhesive. uncover the rest of this painting so that you can see the whole beautiful thing. Oh wow, this is big. This is so big! All right, so let's just test it. Make sure that it is in fact one and a half meters long. So uh, here is the edge of the drill field. one centimeters. So I'm going to do that again to make sure. Yeah, it's that's a hundred. It's over a hundred. Not quite a hundred and one. And this way. It's 150. So it is true to size. All right, I'm going to pull it back on this side first. And I just hope that my cat does not choose now to come and visit. Getting a whole body workout here. Further up. I don't have any more for the paper to go. Right. Okay, so I'm just leaving about an inch uncovered at the bottom, or covered up at the bottom. Stay back, baby. 
Oh wow, this is really nice. Um, all right. All right. So that is what I call the moon moth goddess. It's really big. It is really, really big. Wow. I, I'm just, I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, I, I think they should have used a higher resolution file. But it still looks pretty nice. Okay. So uh, I am concerned that you're getting a whole bunch of glare. So I'm going to pause this while I change the aspect of the camera, uh, put it back to the back facing camera, and, um, and, show and I'll show you the entire thing uh, and still like hold this properly. But um, this is a bit the best that I can do uh, while trying to keep the camera fairly steady because I'm holding this in my hands right now. Um, it looks really nice, but I'm going to put up a picture of the image that I found online, like of the ad, so that you can see. I mean, this looks good, but I think there might have been more detail in the picture. Mind you, the detail might come through when I'm drilling, so uh, we'll see about that. So let's come down. So she's got like a moth's wings in her dress and she's riding a moth and it's just it's just so beautiful see i think there should be more definition around the moth's um antennae uh but i think i still think it's gonna look nice it's just it might have looked spectacular if there was a more high resolution file so that's a little disappointing. All right. Now, you know, I like to get down into faces. So here's my hand. And there's her face. Um, yeah, there should be more definition. Yeah, I'm disappointed. But, you know, I mean, I'm glad that I only had to pay the customs because I would have been disappointed if I had paid, you know, $170 for this plus the $25 shipping. So almost $200. If I had paid $200 Canadian for this and um, I didn't get the definition that this painting really deserves, I would really have been unhappy. Now, in the, uh, Pippi, in the painting itself, there is a there's a moth tattoo on her back and the moth tattoo is really clear in the painting it's not clear here um so i would i would just say it's too bad that they didn't use a better resolution file Pippi is very very interested in all of this <laughs> okay um all right, so we're going to take a look at the drill area and the symbols. So the printing is super, super clear. Oops. Super, super clear. And um, I'm not going to have any trouble, I think, distinguishing. I see there that there's a 5 and an S. But the S is clearly orange and the 5 is clearly yellow. So that's all right. It's very, very clear. Okay, I'm trying to hold it as steady as possible. All right. So that 
is the moon moth goddess. The moon is beautiful. Let's see if I can zoom. I'm zooming in as much as I can on the moon from about a half a meter away from it because I don't want to step on the painting to get you a better view and I don't want it to be too, too shaky. So we'll just zoom back out. We'll just, oh, no, I don't want point eight. I want one. Okay, perfect. Um, okay, oh, now, now it's in um, uh, 2x. So I'm working with a new phone. So I'm still figuring out the new uh, camera features. Okay, so yeah, it's, I mean, it's a beautiful painting, but I think it could have been more beautiful. And again, I'll, um, I've put up the, the image of the original painting uh, so that you can take a look and decide what you think. Okay, I can't show you, like, there's the legend way over there. And I, uh, I'm gonna have to close this up before I can show you the legend uh, because I'm gonna have to actually sit on my diamond painting to do that. So just a moment while, oh, that is a really beautiful moth. Okay, so just a moment while I uh, cover this beautiful lady back up. And uh, the next thing I'll show you the legend and then we will do a drill inventory. Okay, everybody. So here is the legend. And um, I'll just show you this. Sorry, I'm trying to hold as still as possible, but I'm squatting down on top of the diamond painting and it's just very hard to, to be steady. Okay. All right. So that's that. 51 colors. And here's the uh, few more of the symbols. This is in the moon. Okay. All right. So now what I'm going to do is um, roll this up. I'm going to save it in a uh, mailing tube um, just because I don't have anywhere to store this uh, flat. Well, I'll think on that. Um, anyway, so I'm just going to put the canvas away and then the next time you see me, I'll be set up to do the inventory of the drills. Hey everybody, so um, I'm back and I'm ready to start the inventory, but I did just want, uh, for those of you who um, like to know the order number or the item number, this is SJ31591 and it's 150 by 100, 51 colors. All right, so I'm going to start with, I think, the smaller bag. And we'll just start doing inventory on that. First, I'm going to roll this back a little bit so that it lies flat. All right. And I'll just take these together for now uh, because it'll be easier to do the marking off. Here we go. So uh, what we'll see here is that they are all individually bagged and weighed. Um, it would actually be interesting to see what the total weight of these drills is, but I'd say it's probably about four pounds. You know what? I'm gonna go weigh it on my scale in my in my bedroom. Okay, so my kitchen or my bathroom scale will not weigh it. Let's see if my kitchen scale will. That's milliliters, I want grams, okay. All right, 
So this is 1,571 grams. That's 1.57 uh, kilograms. And I'm just going to hit the little switch here to switch it to pounds. So this is three pounds, seven ounces, uh, 7.1 ounces. Three pounds, 7.1 ounces of drills for one diamond painting. That's a lot. <laughs> That's a lot. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. I can put the scale away after I change it back to much. Okay. So, uh, time for coffee. Oh, my lovely assistant is here. Micah, say hello. Say hello, Micah. Say hello, baby. All right. Once again, I'm having trouble finding the opening to the package. There we go. This is just one color here. those bags again. All right. Some of these bags are um, like they're they're closed but uh, let's see, is that... mm -hmm. sometimes there's a, a loose drill on the edge of the zipper seal and when the, and then they fall out and I just like to put them all back in. Oh, okay. I don't know what happened to the drill that I was just trying to find. Anyway, all right. We're wasting time. I'm wasting time. You're not wasting time. You're very patiently waiting while I do this. So I'm going to put the uh, flash on and we're going to do an inventory of all these drills. I think I can move you down a little bit closer. Yeah, okay. That should be all right. Um, there. There. All right, so this is 38, 63, doesn't give you quantity, but 34.1 grams, that's a lot. Number 17, 645. Number 13, 437, number 42, Thirty-eight, twenty-five. number 803, no, number 26, 803, Number 22, 780. Wow, there's a lot of those. Number 47, 38, 36. So it looks like a very, oh my goodness, um, looks like a very pastel palette. Number 49. Thirty-eight fifty-nine. Number twenty. Seven fifty-four. And number thirty-eight. Thirty-seven twenty-seven. All right. So now I've got one here. I just want to put it in the bag that it belongs in. It belongs here. Because, you know, if I lose one, that could just wreck my whole painting. That would be sarcasm, my friends. 
All right, I'm gonna get a uh, Ziploc bag and start putting these away in the Ziploc bag. I need a big Ziploc bag for this. All right. Nope, oh, there's another loose one. Yeah, this is definitely my biggest ever uh, diamond painting. Before this, um, I had one that was um, 80 by 110. And I thought, oh, I'll never get a bigger one than that. And before that, I had my French Peacock from Royal Diamond Painting, which was 75 by 100. And I thought that I was going a little overboard even with that. So, I mean, this is just plum crazy, right? Plum crazy. All right. So I'm trying to keep these relatively neat. All right, next bag. And I guess we'll do half the bag first. Ooh, beautiful purple there. All right. All right. So we have number 30, oops, wrong pen. Okay, we have number 31, which is 938. Number 21, which is 758. Number one, 152. Number 18, 648. Number 24, 796. Number 39, 3743. Number 37, 3713. Boy, they stuff these bags very tight. <laughs> oh my goodness. 553, that is number 16. Number 19, 738. Number 10, 402. Number 35, 3064. Number 14, 498. Number 30, yeah, 921. Number 51, 3864. Number 44, 3828, number 12, 436. Okay, so that's that. Um, All right, so I was I started off saying on election night, I was out watch, walking Pippi, and no, it was it was um, it was a couple of nights after election night uh, on garbage night in the neighborhood. Um, I was thinking that some people like in Canada, we have to have I don't know if it's all of Canada or just uh, my city, but um, there's a rule that all election signs have to be taken away 48 hours within 48 hours of the election because they don't want, you know, that uh, sign pollution messing up our beautiful city. And um, so there's always some signs that end up being thrown away instead of picked up because uh, like in this case, we had a windstorm right after the election 
and so a lot of the signs blew down and um, and so when people were going around to pick up their candidate signs some of them were not visible because they had blown down in the wind and you know sometimes they had fallen behind you know they'd blown behind uh, bushes or whatever so then homeowners just throw those away and I was thinking those signs would make great um, uh, backboards for diamond paintings so something that I could just you know attach a painting to and um, and it could serve as a frame almost um, so I was I was hopeful that I would find a few a few signs in the garbage uh, when I was out on garbage night um, I found one sign in the garbage it was about a I don't know I guess about a 40 by 50 size just a regular lawn sign and uh, so I did pick up it up and so that'll be you know that'll be something that I can use for diamond painting as a as a backing mat if you will something you know just to attach a painting to um, so I was happy about that and um, I'm just going to take this over because the bag is only half full so there we go all right um, but what I did find was this huge it was about a meter and a half by almost two meters corrugated board heavier than sign board and it was black it was like a blackboard but it wasn't a blackboard um anyway somebody had put it out at the curbside this humongous thing and i thought that can be the backboard for me to mount my uh moon moth goddess or whatever she's called and um and so I carried it home it was very hard for me to carry it home because it was so big and I was walking the dog with one hand and I had to hold this thing under my arm and you know almost drag it along uh, behind bes beside and behind me although I couldn't drag it because I didn't want to damage it so anyway it took me a little while to get home and I'm sure I must have looked ridiculous to any of my neighbors who saw me but I just thought this is too good to pass up and uh, so I brought it home and I don't actually have anywhere in the house that I can keep it but um, so it's sitting on the um, on the floor of my balcony uh, wait a minute that was number six 318 and number 45 38 34 what was the other one I'm afraid that I'm not paying attention here yeah okay I, I have been paying attention all right um, so it's it's right now on the floor of my balcony and then yesterday I was in um, my spare bedroom uh, I don't know what I was doing but I realized that my great big diamond paintings that are not yet done uh, I had stood them up against the wall uh, in one of my um, file and save uh, system folders and um, and they were curling over like they were you know flopping over because they're just too big they're much bigger than the file and save box that I that I bought to put the smaller uh, diamond paintings in uh, and anyway so I was thinking wait a minute if I were to get that big black thing I could actually put that behind the big heavy box and it would hold the paintings behind it up flat and straight so I was very happy about that because now I had another in immediate use for this big black thing which otherwise you know might have sat out on my balcony for god knows how long because i don't know when i'm going to do the moon moth goddess um but then as i was diamond painting the other night i was thinking well, wait a minute i don't have an area like i'd have to clear my dining room table and then i'd have to be worried about pippi um walking across my painting or upsetting my diamond you know painting trays and stuff like that if I were to work on it on my um, on my dining room table uh, so I was thinking well that's not necessarily a great thing but then I thought wait a minute that great big black board well it's corrugated plastic uh, like it's like cardboard but it's corrugated plastic like a, a lawn sign anyway uh, it's so big I can just lay it across my like a, uh, lay it on top of my um, 
drafting table and extend the size of my drafting table that much. And then I'll have this perfectly flat surface that I can uh, actually do the diamond painting on. It's gonna take up so much space. Like, it's gonna be crazy. It's gonna be a hazard to get around. Um, for the amount of time that I'm drilling that diamond painting, it's just so huge. But I do now have a place that I can work on it and uh, without completely upsetting my life. But I won't wanna have anybody over to my house, or well, my condo, while I'm diamond painting it because it's gonna make, like it's just gonna take up so much space uh, at my um, in my area that I do my diamond painting on. I'm probably gonna have to move everything in my living room over a couple of feet closer to the window to allow space for um, the diamond painting to, uh, to sit on the uh, work surface. Anyway, um, so there are logistical issues or problems that I'm going to have to resolve before I can actually work on the Moon Moth Goddess. But these are challenges that I feel I can handle. Now, right now I'm thinking, oh, I wanna get started on her right away. Not so much now because it's like, she's not as detailed as I had hoped she would be. So that's a big disappointment. That's such a humongous disappointment. Oh, I just dropped a drill. Okay. Um, such a disappointment, such a disappointment, but oh well. Uh, life is full of disappointments and you just have to be, you just have to smile through them and keep on going or do something about it. Um, and in this case, like I'm thinking about my blue flying dragon that I got from Victoria's Moon. I love doing that dragon. I was happy laying every single drill. The drills were perfect. Uh, the diamond painting, everything about it was perfect. You know, an experience, like a perfect experience to work on. It was only at the very end, after I had finished working on it, that I realized that the diamond painting did not have the same level of detail as the image on the website that I chose it from. And so, you know, that was a little bit disappointing because one of the reasons that I chose that image was because it had such incredible rich detail. But then I thought, wait a minute, what are you getting all upset about? You're not, like, I loved everything about doing that diamond painting. And the final result looked fantastic. So I know that this one here is also going to look fantastic when it's finished. So I'm not gonna stress about the fact that it's maybe not as detailed as I would have liked. I got it for 25 bucks, people. I would have a right to be upset if, you know, I paid $200 for it and it came and it was not as detailed as it should have been, then I would have a right to be upset. Um, but it was a gift. I paid nothing for the painting itself, just, just the customs and processing fees for DHL. So it would, it just, it's just not right, I don't think, to complain. So I'm not going to. Uh, but if you are interested in getting that diamond painting, you need to be aware that it's just not as detailed as, um, as it shows up as on the website. Um, and if you were to order it, I would get in touch with Alvina or somebody at Victoria's Moon to say, look, uh, it's a very detailed image. It needs it needs to be a, a higher resolution file than what you're using now. Um, but I will let you do that. Uh, if I'll, I'll send a copy of this video to Alvina. Um, but I do want to say thank you because I'm very happy with uh, I'm happy with with this whole experience with Royal Diamond painting. Al Alvina was was so nice all the way through the process and you know I really didn't expect her to let me have this diamond painting for nothing I expected I'd you know have to pay 60 or 70 or 80 bucks for it um, and I would have been fine with that but she said no a gift is a gift and uh, and so I think they did a great job um, I love their customer service uh, so it's all good okay so I don't know if you guys have been seeing this, but I'll just run through these numbers as I uh, put them in the bag. 
All right, so we have 550, beautiful, beautiful purple, which I love. And number 801, number 3835, number 315, I really like 315 too. And number 356. And number 340. And number 793. All right, last bit here. Woo, okay. Here are 939s. So I have no 310s. Okay, that's awesome. But there are quite a few 939s. So that's 32, 33, 34, 35. And they sucked all the air out of this. I'm just going to put a little bit more air in there. There we go. That's it. I'll just take that down again. Just to... I don't know, make it a little tiny bit neater. Okay, and this is 158 and 823. Woo! There's a lot of these. Okay, this one also. I needed to open the bag to release the vacuum. And that is number 34, 3041. All right. There we go. All right. So, woo, number 40, 3774. And number 3774. Uh, I'm going to have to check all of these again to make sure that I didn't just miss it. But, as you see, I'm, I, I didn't tick it. Now that could have been because I was distracted, so I'm going to skip over this part, but I'm going to look for 3774, number 40. Oh, there it is. Right there. Okay, so I've got it. Good. It was right close to the top of the bag, too, so I didn't have to undo the whole bag. All right, so, uh, whoops. There we go. All right, so this is the, oh, what diamond painting number is this? This is my, whoops, uh, Moon Moth Goddess, number 234, my 234th order. Moon Moth Goddess. I have no idea what it's really called. It's a Josephine wall. It's um, 100 by 150 and it's square drills and it's from Victoria's Moon. All right. Uh, and yeah, that's weird that it doesn't have a picture, but that's okay, I don't care. I don't need the picture. All right, so that is pretty much it. That concludes this review, uh, or this unboxing, rather. Um, so generally, general impressions. Okay. So general impressions are that uh, I would have been disappointed if I had bought this size of diamond painting and if it lacked 
the amount of detail that this did lack. I'm just going to take a look once more at the link to the painting. Um, yeah, it, it lacks a lot of detail. It lacks a lot of detail. Um, and so that is, to me, I consider that to be a problem. If I, you know, if I paid for it, it's a freebie. So it's not a problem. Uh, I don't know when I'll ever do it, but I actually see it as a challenge. And so, and I hope that I'll be surprised by how much better it looks than it does just on the canvas with no drills on it. So I might be tempted to start it at least. And, um, and if I do that, I will, um, I will definitely keep you posted on how that works out. I'm delighted that I don't have to kit this thing up. Uh, kitting up will simply be a case of putting this into a, a little box or like a Tupperware container of some sort and, um, and uh, just working straight out of the bags because otherwise I'd be refilling all of my containers again and again and again. Uh, so this, this will be handy for that. It also means that it'll be super handy for uh, putting away. <laughs> if I decide I just can't work on this right now, I'll be able to put it aside uh, be, just by putting all the drills back in a bag. So uh, that's it, everybody. I want to thank all of my patrons. I want to uh, thank you for your support. I want to thank all of my viewers and my subscribers uh, because you guys are the ones who make me want to do all these crazy things like 100 by 150 diamond painting. Um, and finally, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you have any comments, leave them down below. And, um, and I look forward to talking to you again soon. So come back and visit everybody. Bye-bye.